So apparently, if you look at my, no, the Funko Pops. There we go. The Funko Pops. You can see my TV. So that's cool. I didn't know that could happen. So, yeah. Okay, so before getting into the list, I think I need to clarify Spooky. This does not consist of scary or even my favorite monsters, but instead, monsters that are in some way cute, beautiful, awesome, so on and so forth, that happens to share unsettling, creepy, or just, well, not, um, stereotypically cute, they will also be in a monster, if that makes sense. Again, spooky is a very loose term, so don't take it too literal. Also, monster is kind of a loose term, so don't take that too literal either. Anyway, I'm Ryan Infinity, and these are my top 10 spooky video game monsters. Let's jump in. Woke up and checked his phone, it gave him quite a fright With Halloween not far away, he's in that spooky mood This morning he said his first words, he hit me with that BOOM! Everybody has that one game from their childhood that scares them to the end of their days And as an adult, they couldn't help but to find charming And for me, that's Snacker Yeah, so as a technical adult, I don't find Snacker in any way creepy or even necessarily awesome, but I think it would be a disservice to kid me if I didn't include him. Usually baby's first water monster, Snacker is an understandable character when people talk about creep factors in gaming. Now that's into itself a good reasoning to have him on the list, but and luckily for him he's kind of cute if you look at him at a, a specific angle that is. In Treasure's Trove Cove, whenever you enter the water, Snacker will appear in where you will be forced to try to find yourself land to escape their jaws. Simple, nothing new, but it is most people's first time dealing with this type of enemy, so it's understandable its impact. As I mentioned, it is kind of cute, plus add on its unwillingness to leave you alone in the water, it becomes unnerving by proxy of its presentedness. Uh, what the fuck did I say? I, 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 I don't know why, but for some reason I can't say the name. I don't understand why, but my body just won't let me apparently. So, yeah. The, uh, ending this, this thing now, I guess. Woke up and checked his phone, it gave him quite a fright With Halloween not far away, he's in that spooky mood This morning he said his first words, he hit me with that BOOM! I've struggled to figure out what Pokemon to use for this list, but I'm pretty confident in my pick here It's a cliche choice to have mimic you on any form of a Halloween type video, but it's a fitting choice nonetheless. Design wise, it's both cute and creepy. It carries on the Pikachu clone legacy while giving something new. Making it a copycat wannabe is such a fun concept, especially when you add on the lore. A Pokemon feared by all finds itself jealous of a Pikachu. So it forges a makeshift costume that looks like the beloved Pokemon, which just results in it being more unsettling, or at least we can assume, we don't know its original form, so we can't really say. Lore aside, it's also just a good Pokemon with decent stats and overall good moves, all around solid team member. Your encounter with it is very fun, having to traverse a haunted Mega Mart while taking pictures of ghost Pokemon. It, it's just fun, and its environment is very spooky. It's a fun Pokemon with a fun design and a fun location. Woke up and checked his phone, it gave him quite a fright With Halloween not far away, he's in that spooky mood This morning he said his first words, he hit me with that Oddly enough, this might be one of the few characters from the Shantae series that I don't want to fuck. Okay, look, that's mostly a joke. 
But with that said, the Anglerfish Siren is by far not my favorite siren for... Reasons. I would have gladly given one of the other sirens this ranking, but they're very human, so it's hard to do that. Doesn't help that there really isn't much to make them creepy or unnerving, unless you consider unnerving to be boobs. Then there's the angler fish siren. What this siren lacks in character, she makes up in design. They manage to balance creepy and cute. Yes, cute. I don't know why, but for some reason, the character is kind of cute to me. And her boss fight is kind of fun. Simple, but fun. Also, I love that the um, Issa, Issa, I think that's what you call, um, the eyeball um, is connected to the hair, which I guess that makes the fishing rod her hair, which, yeah, that's kind of cool. Woke up and checked his phone, it gave him quite a fright With Halloween not far away, he's in that spooky mood This morning he said his first words, he hit me with that BOOM! Skylanders is a beloved classic for me And when it comes to spooky, none is more spooky than the Skull Queen herself is spooky in a hauntingly beautiful way that reminds me a lot of classic La Verona type stories. It's that gothic look I love in character designs, especially with that white eye look. Also, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the wings um, helmet is meant to represent crows. Also, the skull motif is just chef's kiss. Her moves are just broken. I mean, just summon a wall of bones and spam the Psycho Blast thing and you can get through most levels incredibly easy. She's a range fighter, which is very useful in Skylanders, especially the first one. The boss fight against her, Chop Chop, and Ghost Roaster is fun. As an adult, as a kid, it took me months. When I beat it as a kid, I actually screamed joy. That old broken controller did not go out in vain. Overall, lovely design, and if you read any of the extra stuff like the comics, the character is actually pretty fun. Woke up and checked his phone, it gave him quite a fright. With Halloween not far away, he's in that spooky mood. This morning he said his first words, he hit me with that Nintendo has no shortage of monsters ranging from horrifying to oh my god I want to hug it. So there's no surprise that the Mario franchise has one of that's possibly a perfect mix of both. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, the boos range more to cute than horrifying, but there's no lack of reasonings to why they creep me out. The weeping angel effect is the mechanic that the only way you can survive an encounter with a certain enemy is by staring at it, effectively staring at your fear. Which is inherently a creepy thought to me. The fact that they tend to come in herds makes them quite intimidating. Also, I know it's a childhood fear, but that laugh will forever be in my nightmares. But other than that, there are they are kind of just cute, so yeah, I mean, look at them. They're big balls with stupid, goofy-ass grins. Woke up and checked his phone, it gave him quite a fright With Halloween not far away, he's in that spooky mood This morning he said his first words, he hit me with that Boo! Yep, I'm back at it again, talking about Skullgirls So, what character am I gonna be talking about today? Oh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Yeah, so double is, uh, something else. You might be wondering, Re, isn't double more horrifying than your classification of spooky? 
And to answer that, I would have to say, kind of. Again, my classification for spooky is loose. I would have to say my reasoning is just the art style. One consistent thing you probably noticed throughout my list is that the art style for most of the entries are simple or chibi-esque. And that's because the art style contributes to the feel. I think Double manages to be detailed enough to be horrifying, but simplistic enough to just make it simply spooky. I love this design. The Lovecraftian with a pinch of um, John Carpenter's The Thing. It fits really well with Skullgirl's gothic aesthetic. The shape-shifting part of the character gives it this consistent movement, which just makes it unsettling. Also, its nun form is kind of hot. I'm sorry, but come on, look at those hips. Woke up and checked his phone, it gave him quite a fright. With Halloween not far away, he's in that spooky mood. This morning he said his first words, he hit me with that boo! Okay, don't get me wrong, Blaze Blue is cool, but I only really care about Arnakune. <laughs> Okay, kind of. There's a handful of characters I think are cool, but Arnakune is the major thing keeping me around. A scientist obsessed with impressing his superiors would push the bounds of science until he steps into a void of infinite knowledge, which makes him into a half stuttering blob of whatever the fuck he is. Like, dudes is out of his mind. He's a lunatic. But it's a sad lunacy. Arna Kune does get some moments of clarity, but it's sad. The fact that for a second, he's normal, just for him to get kicked back into his madness is really heartbreaking. Arna Kune is a warning of the unknown and what searching for beyond your understanding can do. Reach for the stars but not past reality. Keep yourself grounded. Also, he's a little fucker to main and I love it. Woke up and checked his phone, it gave him quite a fright. With Halloween not far away, he's in that spooky mood. This morning he said his first words, he hit me with that boo! Look, okay, it's called Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. It, it would be weird to not have something from that game on the, you know, top 10 spooky video game monster list, you know? But most specimens just are just creepy or scary. Well, except one that is. Oh no! Yeah, the only unnerving thing about this one is just it's a jump scare creature. And to be honest with you, it's not even a good jump scare. But god, it's adorable. Look at it. It's so cute. Not you. You're not cute. Go the fuck away. Now, there's an awareness to spookies as when it comes to jump scares. Jump scares are cheap and stupid. And the game knows it. So because of that, the game feels like it's just indulging in it. Which helps to make the cardboard cutouts more, you know, fun. Woke up and checked his phone, it gave him quite a fright. With Halloween not far away, he's in that spooky mood. This morning he said his first words, he hit me with that boo! When discussing horror, most people tend to focus solely on the physical. Now yes, Physically opposing and or physical harm is worth the fear. But psychologically is a whole different ballpark and I think the radiance encaptures that perfectly. Radiance is an oddly beautiful creature while also having one of the most unnerving feels to her. Honestly, I don't know where to start when it comes to discussing the Radiance, let alone anything in Hollow Knight, but I digress. Okay, okay, okay. 
Let's start off with the design. The Radiance has a finely Lovecraftian inspired look, and the light moth design is awesome. There's this uncanny look to her which I think is done on purpose since she is a dream based character, but that could just be me. The Radiance isn't spooky because of a design choice, but what the Radiance is and represents. A lack of humanity, or buggery? The Radiance is a haunting nightmare upon the dreams of all under her rule, and yet she's beautiful, making her quite a spooky monster. Woke up and checked his phone, it gave him quite a fright. With Halloween not far away, he's in that spooky mood. This morning he said his first words, he hit me with that boo! Animatronics, Five Nights at Freddy's. It's FNAF. Very few of the characters are actually scary, but they are quite spooky. Bullies, Little Nightmares 2. I hate dolls, especially haunted dolls, especially haunted bully glass dolls. At least I can smash them. Potatoes, cooking companions. It's a potato that wants to eat you. Chaos, Hades. Don't get me wrong, it's an incredible design with an incredible environment. But it's a little too detailed to be spooky. The Lamb, Cult of the Lamb. This is a weird game. Then again, I don't know what I expected from a game about making a cult, but the lamb is adorable. Woke up and checked his phone, it gave him quite a fright. With Halloween not far away, he's in that spooky mood. This morning he said his first words, he hit me with that boo! Growing up, one of my favorite monsters is what I would classify as spooky. What the fuck is that? That being the green boom boom creature itself. I honestly cannot tell you why I love the creeper, I just do. I love the design, I love the dread you feel when you hear it. There's a point to be made that Minecraft is a spooky game. Multiple mobs seem to have very eerie designs, ranging from the slender Enderman and the hulking Warden. And don't get me started on the soundtrack, seriously, being in a cave and hearing that sizzle Man, no fam, just, ugh. Minecraft's simplistic design plus its iconic haunting sounds and gameplay, the creeper is deserving of the number one spot in my opinion. Yo, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It, really, it was really fun to make and I love Halloween, so yeah. Also, you should go check out my um, six horror, non-horror video games. That was a pretty interesting video to make. So yeah, you should go do that. I was Red Infinity, and this was my top 10 spooky video game monsters. Chala. Last heart, now that you're gone, I wish I could have got a chance to tell you goodbye. But now that you're gone, I just wanna die. I don't know if I wanna stay alive. I was hoping to make.